Welcome back. If you're at all like me, you've heard that the hydrogen economy is coming, that we are going to have hydrogen-fueled cars and planes and just everything, but it seems to always be 10 years away. So every 10 years it gets updated to be another 10 years away. But we are here today with a new company that says that's not true, the hydrogen economy is upon us. Justin Sujinda is the chief engineer for Standard Hydrogen Company, a new company that is potentially changing the world. Right. So how are you gonna do that? So in a nutshell, it kind of breaks down to everything that you throw in those black trash bins at the end of the day at your house or that companies will send to the landfills we can essentially wrap it all up, put it into a reactor, and out comes, and this is hard for a lot of chemists to believe, but the base constituent. So plastics, for example, yeah. turn into carbon dust and hydrogen gas. And these are things that, that, you know, for the longest time were just not really believed possible. I mean, you, you think that I could just stop at plastics, but take the next nearest issue, which is rubbers from tires and mm -hmm. cars, or Let's even go even farther to sawdust from mills or, you know, banana peels. Um, anything that comes basically out of a household that is made of carbon and hydrogen and various other things. We throw it into a reactor and we, we turn it into hydrogen and uh, the offsets can be sold out as pure atomically pure or nearly atomically pure items that industries can use for various other number of purposes like carbon fiber and batteries, graphite films, stuff like that. That's amazing. So really anything in your household, is there anything that, that can't go into the reactor? So I have my own hypothesis, but um, we've identified a handful of things that give us some trouble. Mm -hmm. um, and this, this technology is in its it, hydrogen in general is in, in, is in, is in its infancy state. Okay. And um, to answer your question, right now we've identified a few that are yeses. Things like PVC, poly polyvinyl chlorides, mm -hmm. and things that, that make up a handful of other various plastics that were uniquely made. Okay. Um, but with a bit of engineering muscle and a little bit of testing, I, I believe we can get past those items. But as a clarity um, for the community as a whole, uh, for the most part, everything that you would see in your everyday trash can can be thrown in, uh, short of metals, obviously. Mm -hmm. So if we have metals, yes, they can be thrown in the reactor, but we're just going to have to ex you know, pull them out They're going to come out as metals. They're going to come out as metals. Okay. I'm, not, I'm not creating alchemy here. Right? <laughs> I'm not turning lead into gold, per okay. se. I'm just... Well, that would be next. <laughs> There's a good opportunity for that, too. Right, right, right. I'm just taking what's there and cutting the bonds that are there. And uh, at, on the output, you get some more atomically pure items. And it's my understanding that the reason the hydrogen economy, so to speak, has not successfully kicked off until now is that the process is really cost prohibitive. And until now, we haven't been able to bring it down to a level where the consumer would actually be able to engage with it. But you guys are doing something different, and this is pure green hydrogen. You could say green hydrogen. Um, I, don't, I don't know if I have the right to coin a new term called white hydrogen. Okay. Um, like kind of white and shining armor. You have the right here. <laughs> you go right ahead. Uh, but essentially what it comes down to is, yes, it is a green hydrogen. There is no offshoots of CO2. There is no offshoots. We're not burning anything, okay. right? In order to get carbon monoxide or carbon dioxide from a normal process, that would make hydrogen from this perspective. You'd burn it or you would react it with methane or various other, you know, set of ways. Um, and long story short, yes, it's green. We, we have an intermediary. We throw it in with our mixture. It breaks down the bonds, and we get hydrogen and a bunch of atomically pure items. And, um, and yeah, and, and that's where we get to a, a point where things that, that were cost prohibitive. I mean, this industry, it's kind of everybody is at, is at, the, at their bits to chomp at you know, something new, something that's going to you know, take the next step. And uh, the industry as a whole has remained in its infancy. People would say the top two things that are preventing hydrogen from getting off is cost and availability. And, uh, 
and their ability to kind of use it, to store it, to compress it, to, to do those types of things. And, okay. and I, I want to drag us back just for a second back to when oil was in this similar state, right? Oil was just this liquid that you could light on fire and put it in a box and it'd explode, right? And there wasn't very many things that could use it. But if you think about hydrogen, it's kind of in that similar state. I want to follow that same timeline. Provide what is useful and people will invent things and use it in the most useful and cunning ways that even I, myself, or anybody else that I know could probably use it as. So I'm having visions of all of these landfills being emptied into your reactors and coming out as a viable new fuel that actually will also create energy and a new source of clean energy for every community. And also those mountains of rubber tires and the floating plastic islands of mm -hmm. waste around the world. Is that, That's all is that what you're stuff. talking about? So I guess if I, were to, if I were to have my pick and choose, I would stop the landfill from getting bigger from the first place. Okay. I mean, we're producing you know, millions of metric tons of, of trash just from the U.S. on a regular basis. Now, in the U.S., there are some uh, guessing statistics that about a third of it is you know, recycled or mulched mm -hmm. out and reused, but that leaves still quite a bit of material. And the U.S., by far, amongst a few other countries, has really pushed recycling programs. Right. And the efficiency of those isn't particularly great either. They use a lot of energy in themselves, mm -hmm. and, and that's negating the fact. But um, the floating islands, for example, right? You can just imagine, and I've seen several companies out there, two or three in particular, where they'll just stick out big, you know, like lines of barges and then trash will pile up against mm -hmm. them and then they'll go out and collect it. And then their model right now is taking it back, create it in a bracelet, sell it as plastic goods. Right. And just taking that perspective, you could throw a hydrogen generator on those plants. They go out and they harvest the plastic, turn it into hydrogen, and if it's a hydrogen powered boat, it powers the boat. Wow. And now you go out with a little bit of hydrogen, you start harvesting these miniature islands of trash in the Indian and the Pacific and all these different oceans, and you come back with a barge full of pure hydrogen and a few other constituents that we've broken off from it. So when will we actually see this? So right now we're in a state where, yes, we're, we're in prototyping. Mm -hmm. uh, there's. I'm not selling you a hydrogen refinery to put it in your, in your basement right Although now. Although it sounds like I could benefit <laughs> from it in a good way. <laughs> yeah, there's, um, so right now the first step is, okay, let's, we, we finish a lot of our prototypes. Mm -hmm. There's a few engineering um, things that we've, we've just like had breakthroughs just this last weekend where we get through it and we, we're just like, we finally, we've been knocking our head on this for two months now. And we finally got past it. Let's get to this next step. Congratulations. Thanks. And, and if anybody's in engineering, they know that you deal with a complex problem, uh, kind of corny to use this, this term, but it's like an onion. You, you hit the, mm -hmm. the biggest shell on the outside, which was holding you back, and you hit another shell, hit another shell, and until you've gotten a, a, you know, kind of a more refined system. And that's the phase that we're in right now. We know the system works. We've had it, we've had it function. And now we're hitting the... We're, getting, we're overcoming those engineering challenges that have kind of stunted a lot of other companies and we're pushing through them. Longevity, um, energy consumption, all of those things, they're all very low and, mm -hmm. and we're, we're quite happy with it. That's great. So now the company is at what state? Looking for alliances, partnerships, uh, Fundraising, I mean, it's a, combination a growth of stage, all, right? right? A little bit of everything? Yeah, a combination of all. We're, we're in a position where um, we can start to tweak our technology to fit like a puzzle piece with a couple of other technologies. Mm -hmm. um, much like, you know, a lot of startup companies, they're going to go out and they're going to say, yes, we need money. Of course, we need money. Everybody needs money. Everybody needs money. But um, that's not actually what's holding us back mm -hmm. right now. Um, you know, we need to make sure that, yes, we've, we've got a way to create hydrogen. We've, we've got that next step, but, you know, a lone soldier out there doing his own thing needs an army. Sure. And we need a backing of people that are going to be able to stand next to us and complement what we have. Otherwise, it's going to be similar to what you've seen in the past, which is, you know, oh, we've got something great with hydrogen, and everybody's like, ah, oh, it's great, but ten nobody's more using years. it. Ten more years. Yeah, ten more years. So, so um Essentially what we're doing is we're kind of just spreading the word. It's, it's coming, okay. we're there, we're creating something great, and we've overcome 
the largest portions of what other companies have had issues with, which is high energy consumption and you know unfriendliness, catalysts, no precious metal catalysts, things mm -hmm. like that. And we've, we've gotten to a point where this system has no moving parts. We've engineered out everything that could physically break on the system. And we've broke it down to a simple, uh, and one of my engineering mentors told me that the best engineering solutions are the simplest and the ones that are easy to break down for anybody. Yeah. If you have trouble explaining it to the next person. You don't understand it yourself. You don't understand it yourself. And do, are you really, is it something that you can pass on to the next person? Mm -hmm. I'm not going to live forever, so. So what should we look for <laughs> next? When should we expect to see something from standard hydrogen? So from standard hydrogen, the next thing that I'd see is um, we're going to start approaching industry. We're going to get this reactor fully functional where it looks beautiful. Um, I mean, I could show someone right now what it looks like, and they're just going to see a bunch of mad science tools and <laughs> pipes and things hanging out all over the place. But for the most part, um, we're going to dress it up. We're going to you know, get through a few more little kinks that we have in the system, and then we're going to start displaying it to industry. And this system, while it can be used commercially, it can be used in all assets and facets of life that we have kind of laid out, we're, we're looking at you know, twofold, an industrial application where we're throwing a lot of industrial waste. Now, mm -hmm. a lot of the waste that people hear about is municipal waste, things right. that comes from our houses. Nobody's even quantified the amount of industrial waste that exists today. True. And this can handle quite a bit of that. Everything from 3D printed plastics that people use in, in the world to make all kinds of different molds to generic, very offshoots of, of you know, difficult poisonous gases wow. we can break down to some portion too. So, to your answer, we're going to uh, kind of use a shotgun approach a little bit because we want the best success, find the interested parties and start to hone in on them okay. and fine tune it. So, industrial interested parties as well as commercial interested parties, things that are going to go out and save the world with you know, needing energy or needing hydrogen that we can kind of couple with, so. Well, anything that changes the world is welcome here and welcome news. And thank you so much for coming to share with us. Not a problem. We appreciate it. I'll look for an update on standard hydrogen very soon. I'll come back and do it. Thank <laughs> you. And we'll be right back.